So if you're part of the fish fam, you probably already know what's in this letter. Uh, she's a great YouTuber. She's been supporting uh, everyone in the fish fam. She's an awesome person. Um, so without further ado, let me just get to it and open it. I've been really excited to get this and check in my mail every day like a little kid running to the mailbox. There we go. So she gives her contact information and such on a little card. Very nice touch. But of course, nonetheless, it is Susan from SLC Aquatics. And like I said, um, if somehow you uh, stumbled upon my channel before hers, you need to check hers out. Uh, not only is she great at her fish content, but overall just an awesome person. I mean, just, just someone you want to know. So there it is. It's official. Got the Susan SLC Aquatics on the tank. It's an awesome little sticker. I love the design on it. Uh, thank you so much, Susan. I appreciate it. Uh, I hope much love comes back to you. Before we get to the 75 gallon tank, I just want to show another package I did receive. Um, I already opened it up a little bit because I didn't want to struggle with it before. <laughs> you know, one of those people on the video like, oh, I'm going to have to put down the camera, so I'll go ahead and open this. So I went ahead and opened it. But uh, it is another YouTuber, and I'm sure you guys already know her, Solid Gold Aquatics. Uh, she's done, she, well, she's been doing this for years now. I've watched tons of her videos. I really enjoyed the uh, information she gives on there. Uh, obviously, her main focus is goldfish. And even if you don't keep goldfish, which I don't, there's just so much knowledge given on that channel. Uh, so pretty girl, pretty fish, learning stuff. What could go wrong, right? So I'm going to go ahead and throw on this shirt, and then we'll check out the 75. Here it is folks, my 75 gallon tank, uh, it's an acrylic tank, and it's the tank that got me into the hobby. I really didn't know how much I liked fish until I started setting this up and learning about planting tanks. Uh, plants and fish together are just an awesome thing, and I think it really makes a whole ecosystem come together, which makes it a little more enjoyable for the fish as well as you. Uh, but uh, yeah, the tank's not perfect, it's got some crazing on it. Uh, if you're not familiar with what crazing is, basically it's these marks on the edges here. Yeah, it can't be fixed as far as I know. Uh, but I got this tank for free for my co-worker, so I'm not complaining whatsoever. I, I actually love this tank because of the reasons I just told you. Now, this is a saltwater tank, so it does have an overflow in the back right-hand corner there. Uh, or it was originally a saltwater tank. It's obviously not a saltwater tank anymore. Uh, and then uh, what I did is I went ahead and did a 30 gallon uh, sump, freshwater sump that's in the cabinet there. We'll get to that a little bit later here. Uh, but this is all low light, low tech, no CO2, all simple plants and really easy as far as maintenance. I don't stock, overstock it so I could do water changes once every two weeks or so and be just fine. I got a Beamsworth light on it. Uh, this is the Beamsworth LED, it's just one of the cheap ones. And it works just fine for uh, low light plants. Now, uh, as far as plants, we got some Anubias here. Anubias is growing out pretty good in here. I uh, got some spread out throughout the tank. Uh, before she goes away, there's our albino bristlenose pleco. She's awesome, probably one of my favorite uh, fish in this tank. She's just chilling there. All right, and then uh, we got our angel fish here. I've got five angelfish in total. Two of them are paired off. I don't know where the fifth one is exactly right now. All the fifth one's hiding in the plants back there. But uh, two have paired off and actually laid eggs at one point. Those two right there. Uh, they are veil tail zebra angels. And then I got this one oddball one here that was in the tank at the local fish store when I bought them. So I decided to take him home too. And then he's kind of paired off with this one, but I don't know. She's just back and forth between the two. And there's a little bit of a standoff there as to who's alpha. 
All right, then we got our uh, turquoise rainbows here. Uh, that's one of the males. I got one male, two females. Awesome fish, got a lot of personality. I love rainbow fish. Uh, the plan is to eventually have more rainbow fish in this tank once I'm sure I can continuously uh, stay up to date with water changes and everything. I'll up the stock. All right, then in the back, that stem plant that you see growing tall in the back, that is uh, believed to be Hygrophilia augustifolia. It's uh, it's grown out quite a bit. I just had one little stem at, at first. I keep propagating it and it keeps filling out. So enjoying it a lot. And then down here we got some cryptocorn or cryptocorn uh, Wendetti red. Got some Java moss down here in the back that that just got there somehow. I don't know. All right, then we got a dwarf neon rainbow. I only have one Praycox rainbow here. Um, and that's because I had two females with him and the other two, or the two females passed away. I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but uh, yeah, he's the last one left. And I really like them. And I think I'm gonna get probably like five more to go with him. Then we got a couple platies in here. These platies are what's left over of what I used to cycle the tank. I did a fish in cycle. Um, never done any other type of cycling methods uh, because I didn't really know that much at the time. And luckily, most of the fish that I cycled the tank with lived, so I just ended up giving them back to the fish store. Um, and then I kept a few of the platies that I actually liked, and there that's what's left of them. All right, and then as far as the wood, I got the wood at a retention pond. It, I just saw it sitting there, so I scooped it up. Uh, make sure I did a good job at cleaning it up. You know, water dry. Oh. Um, what did I do? Oh, I steamed it. Is what I did. I steamed it with a like a steam mop, detachable uh, steamer. Steamed it. Uh, sun dried it. Water logged it. Sun dried it. Water logged it. Sun dried it. And put it in the tank. You know, just use your uh, best judgment when adding wood into the tank. You don't want to add any parasites or anything to the, to your tank that could cause harm to your fish. All right, and then the lava rock, the big piece back there, I just went to a landscape company and I looked at the rocks and that's the one that stood out to me. I actually love it. I think the lava rock has a lot of a lot of uh, character to it as well as a lava rock is very beneficial for or very good at housing beneficial bacteria. And then there's that little piece down there at the bottom, that rock with a hole in the middle. That one I actually bought at a local fish store. You're not really going to find one like that typically at a at a landscape company. And I think that pretty much covers everything in here. Oh, there's one more thing. I got some dwarf sag in here that I just put in here recently. It's doing okay. I don't know how well it's going to do, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the whole th the whole idea here is to experiment with what you can and can't do. Sometimes things are going to work out, sometimes they're not. Uh, and then part of the challenge is trying to figure out why it didn't work out. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. I also have algae all over it, black beard algae. My plan is to do a future video on how to spot treat it. All right, I went ahead and kicked, up the, kicked on the light so we could see this. Um, so I did a DIY sump system for this. Um, let's see if this light helps at all. And uh, ignore that top fin there. Do not buy top fin <laughs> flakes. This stuff was horrible. Um, so I did a DIY sump here. I did the baffles and everything. And I'm just using lava rock for filter media. And then I've got some uh, pot scrubbies in there. Those are essentially just for uh, having some extra cycled media if I ever need it. Um, and then I got filter socks here right behind here should be two of them um, there were a few mistakes I made on this thing I I wouldn't have done the filter socks the way that it's shown there if I could do it over again all right and that's just my piping system um, one is from the overflow to the bottom of the tank it goes to goes uh, over into, into the sump the other one is from the from the pump here, can you see that? Let's see, there we go. From the pump to return back to the tank. All right, and that goes through that uh, 
overflow in the back. This was originally a saltwater tank, so that's why it's built on there already. Um, got some pothos up here. And then uh, here's my return line. Comes across. A little piece of styrofoam to keep it steady. And then I did a DIY return, or not return, uh, spray bar there. Just drilled some holes, capped it off. Um, and then you can see I tried to do the Krylon paint, but I didn't sand it enough, so it didn't, it didn't hold enough. So I need to go ahead and take that off at some point, sand it down, and reapply that paint to, to get it going. So thanks for hanging out with me, everyone. I hope you enjoyed uh, looking at my 75 gallon tank there. Looks good, right? Um, but uh, subscribe, like, uh, comment if you got a comment, whether good or bad. No, I don't care. Uh, I, I could take a little constructive criticism. And uh, until I see you next time, guys, I hope you have a good one.